So, so far in this playlist, we've had a look at containers and components in Swing. Now, the components are used to either present information to the user or get information from the user. So, for example, the user might enter some text into a text field, or you might click a button or select a checkbox. Now, we're going to want some way of responding to that. So, that's where listeners come in. We add listeners to our components. And when events happen on those components, the listeners are notified. So there's a bunch of different listeners we can use to listen to events on components in Swing. But these are the ones we're going to cover in this video. And hopefully this will give you an idea about what we can do with listeners. And you can look up the other listeners you can use in the Java doc. The first one we'll look at is a window listener. So you probably notice that when I'm running this program, when I close it, the program doesn't stop working because when I click close, I'm just closing the frame. Uh, it's really just making the frame invisible. Uh, the program's still running, the frame still exists in memory, and we need to click the close button in Eclipse to stop the program running. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a window listener and that's going to act on the frame and it'll give you an idea of how a listener works. So my frame is a J frame. So I'm going to make a window listener. So this could be in a separate class, but I'm going to make it as an inner class for this J frame. So I'm going to say class my window listener implements window listener so window listener is an interface and I'm going to implement it with this class now I can right click on here and add um, implemented methods we've got all the different methods that can happen to the window so a window can be opened it can be closing it can be closed iconified etc etc so I'm going to make one of these my window listener it's new my window listener and I'm going to add it to the frame this add window listener window listener and then I have to remember that window closing is the method that gets called when we click the close button so here i'm going to system out print line just to demonstrate it working window closing and i'll also system out print line for the other methods Okay, so for each of the methods in the window listener, I've done system out print line just to say which method is running. Now I'm going to run again and we can see window activated, window opened. If I click off the window, window is deactivated. If I focus on it again, window activated, I can minimize it. Window iconified, window deactivated. If I maximize it again, window de-iconified, window activated. If I close it with the uh, close button, window closing, window deactivated. So the window closing method is one that I'm going to use now. And when window closing happens, I'm going to exit my program. So what I'm really going to say is when we close a window, we take that to mean that the user wants to close the program, which is a pretty sensible thing to think. So in window closing, I'm going to say system exit zero, zero meaning return error code zero, which is not an error. So now when I run my program, I can do what I need to do, click close, and then the program closes.
Now I added these system out print lines just for uh, demonstration purposes. I don't actually want this. So I'm going to get rid of them all. I just want my window listener to close the program when um, we close the window. Now because my window listener implements window listener, we have to implement all of the methods in the um, interface. But you can imagine that because we only want to do something when window closing has happened, what we might want to do is implement this interface and have all of these methods implemented, but then extend it and only um, implement the method that we want. Uh, but Java's already done this for us and it's called a window adapter or it's called an adapter and there's an adapter for each of the listeners which have more than one method. So instead of saying implements window listener, I'm going to extend the adapter class and the adapter class already implements the window listener. So I'm going to say extends window adapter uh, it all still works, but now what I can do is delete all the methods except the one that we want to implement. The window closing. And now we run this again and it still works. We close the window and the program closes. Now we can also do, this is just syntax really, but we can put the window listener directly into the method. So if we know we just want to add a quick listener to um, to our window, so new add window listener, new window adapter. And then we can just implement the method we need in there and take out the inner class. And then we don't have to instantiate it like that. We're just instantiating it in line with the method call. So there we still have a window listener listening to that window being closed. So that's a window listener and implementing the window closing method on the window listener. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is an action listener. Now, an action listener normally goes on components where there's just a simple action that can be performed. So, for example, when we press a button, we use an action listener because it's just a simple action on that button, pressing the button. There's not really much else we can do to a button. Um, there's probably other listeners we can add, like mouse down and mouse up listeners, but there's basic thing we want to do with a button is respond to it being pressed. Now I'm going to modify the program so this text area down here I'm going to keep a reference to it so instead of just creating the text area I'm going to keep it J text area my text area equals new J text area I'm going to add that to like I did before but I'm going to keep a reference to my text area in the class and when we add our button uh, where's our button here's our button I'm going to create our button properly I'm just creating it so I've got a reference to it because I want to add a listener to it. So now I'm going to say my button add action listener. New action listener. There's no need to use an adapter because an action listener has only one method. And that method is action performed. When action performed happens, I'm going to say my text set text button pressed. 
So that's how we respond to a button being pressed by adding an action listener to the button and we we'll say button pressed when in the text area. So now I run our program, the text area says text area, we click the button and it says button pressed. So that's a simple action listener. We can also add action listeners to other components. So for example, we can add them to check boxes or radio buttons or anything that we're going to press and do a simple action. So I'm going to check, I'm going to get what was unchecked checkbox on here, unchecked checkbox. I'm going to add action listeners to those two to do a similar thing to the button. So so now I've added an action listener to both of my checkboxes and it's going to do a similar thing to what the button was doing in the text area it's going to say checkbox 1 pressed or checkbox 2 pressed so let's run this now I can press the button and it says button pressed, checkbox one pressed, checkbox two pressed. Uh, the difference when dealing with a checkbox than the button is that the checkbox has a state, it's either on or off, whereas a button is just pressed. So I'm going to modify these action listeners to read the state of the checkbox and put that in the text area. So I can just read that straight from the checkbox. I need to save these checkboxes into the class so they're in scope. And I can read the checkbox by is selected. So now when I select the checkboxes, it's going to say checkbox one true, checkbox one false, checkbox two false, checkbox two true, and with the button, it's just a simple button pressed. So there we've added three different action listeners, one on each checkbox, which is reading the state, and one on the button. But maybe we don't really want listeners all over the place. We don't want to add a listener to each of our components. So what we can do is add one listener to several components. And with an action listener, we've got an action command that we can add to the event. So how we do this is on the button and on the checkboxes, I'm going to add an action command. And that's just going to be a constant string and then we can use the same action listener on all three things and we can respond to the event according to the action command. So let's have a look at how we do that. So first thing at the top, I'm going to create a new action listener. And I'm going to create three different action commands. So and then on my button I'm going to set the action command to be the button action command. Create the action listener at the top. And I'm going to add it to the button and the checkboxes. I'm going to set the action command of my checkbox one. 
Okay, so for the button and the checkboxes, I've set their action command, and there's three action commands, which are just strings that I've defined. And then I've added the new action listener, and now I'm going to use one action listener to respond to three different events. So now I can get the action command by saying string action command equals e dot get action command. And now I could say if action command equals button action command. Okay, so this action listener now is responding to three different action commands. So really what I've done there is I've just taken the action listeners instead of adding them each to each of the components as I built the um, built the, the the graphics I'm just going to have one action command one action listener listening to many different um, components so now it's doing exactly the same as before uh, it's not quite doing the same as before. I think I've made a mistake. Uh, I set the action command of checkbox 1 to 2. So that's fixed now and now it will be doing exactly the same as before. Uh, we can take it one stage further. Um, instead of defining the action listener here we can just say that this frame itself implements action listener we can implement many different listeners in one class so we can have the frame be its own action listener it could be its own window listener um, or any other listeners so i'm going to add the un unimplemented methods which is going to put our action performed method into our frame and there it is and then we can take the code of the action perform method and put it in there so now it's we just don't need this action listener and we don't need to define a new action listener class so we've made the frame object its own action listener and then when we we can add this as an action listener to the two checkboxes and the button. So now the behavior should still be the same button pressed, checkbox one, true and false, checkbox two, true and false. Okay, so the next one I'll show you is a list selection listener. So on the list, we can add a list selection listener. And I'll say this. And then I need to implement the list selection listener. Obviously, I could make a new list selection class. I could define it in line with in the in the call to add list selection listener, but I'm going to do it the third way, and that is just make my frame a list selection listener. And then if we can get at the list, then we can output the selected value. I'm just doing string value of there because we're getting an object out of the list. So now I've got a list selection listener. So when I select from the list, we're putting that into the text area. <laughs> 
Now it's worth looking in the Java doc for the things that we can do uh, to find out which events listeners we want to add on each component. So if we have a look at the text field, for example, let's see what we can do to the text field. There's a J text field, so I'm going to create it properly. And I'm going to type add and then look at what I can do. So there's a component listener, which is listening to changes to the component, container listener, focus listener. Uh, I think I'll add an obvious one for JTEX field, a key listener. So I'm going to add key listener and I'm going to make this class a key listener. I'll add the methods for key listener. We've got key typed, key pressed, key released. So I'm going to say so this is firing key events. Obviously each listener is can have different properties. Uh, so the key event which is being sent to the uh, methods of the key listener has a get key char method. So we can see which key has been typed, pressed or released. So let's see what that does. Text field, if I press a key, I'm going to press Q type Q, release Q. I think the pressed will be happening at the same time as the typed. I'm not quite sure, but the um, we can have typed, pressed and released key events. Next quick listener I'll show you is on J slider. Where's our J slider? There's our J slider. I'm going to say add, and this I think uses a change listener. Add change listener. And I'll make this frame a change listener as well. So a change listener has a state change method. I just need to put our slider in scope. Here we can say slider get value. Um, I'll just put some slider equals. So now when we move the slider, the state change method will call and that will say slider value equals or slider equals in the text area. So there we can see uh, we set our slider with a maximum value of 100 and a minimum value of zero. So we're reading the value from the slider as we move it. Now there's one more thing which is interesting to know. I think all of the events has a get source method. So if we say e get source, this will give us an object the object which uh, that event came from. So this get source will be the slider. So if I wanted to, I could say j slider s equals cast it to a j slider. And then I could use that as the reference to the object if it wasn't in scope. And that would also be another way of doing the sort of action command thing where we could look at which component centers the event.
rather than look at the action command on that event. So that we still have the reference to the slider. We can still read the slider, but we're doing it through the get source method of the event object, which is sent to the listener. Now the final few events, event listeners, which I think you should know about are mouse listeners. And I'm actually gonna, we've been doing a lot with our text area. So I'm going to add some listeners to my text area. I'm gonna add a mouse listener. And the mouse listener has methods, mouse clicked, pressed, released, entered, and exited. And I'm just going to set the text of the text area when we do, when we fire these events. So there's clicked. Pressed. released, entered, and exited. And I think also these clicked, um, I think pressed and released, they actually have coordinates as well. So we can say e get x and E get Y. I've done that for clicked. I'll also do it for pressed and released. So now we can see when the mouse enters the region of the text area, we get entered and exited. And then we get, I think we get pressed and clicked and released. And we're getting the coordinates, so the upper left corner would be zero, zero. I can't quite point accurately enough. And down here we'll have the, whatever the X coordinate and Y coordinate is. Um, I'm just going to comment these out so as not to confuse the next demonstration. The next demonstration will be a mouse motion listener. So I'm going to add add mouse motion listener. And then let's implement the methods required for mouse motion listener. We've got mouse dragged and mouse moved. And I think we've also got the coordinates on this. So you could imagine what we would want to use this for if you have button press and maybe you were making a paint package and you wanted the when the user presses the button we start a sort of anchor point and then when we draw we draw a line across from the original anchor point we could use dragged and moved methods to be listeners for this so let's just take a look at what this does So see, we have moved as we move over the components and we see what coordinate we're pointing at from the top left, X and Y positions. And if we hold down the mouse button, we're now dragging. So those two methods are useful if you want to do 
move mouse movement or dragging you want to know where the coordinate that you're pointing in the wind obviously we can do this stuff on other containers as well i'm demonstrating in the text area but we could be doing it in a panel or in the in the frame itself uh, this isn't limit, limited to a text area at all and then the final demonstration uh, I'll show you is a mouse wheel event a mouse wheel listener so my text area add mouse wheel listener and I'm going to have this object be a mouse wheel listener and now we have mouse wheel moved get units to scroll I think get wheel rotation get units to scroll I think was the uh, there so when I go forward I get three when I go backwards I get minus three so there we're reading the mouse wheel obviously this event is being called time and time again so as I scroll the mouse I'm calling that listener method again and again so um, although it's setting the same thing in the um, text area okay so I've been adding all our listeners to the frame so I've made the frame the listener for all these things and we've been through all of these listeners so we've got a We've been through an action listener, which is listening for a simple action on a component, a list selection listener that we use for the list, a key listener that we used for key press, key release and key typed, a change listener, which we used on the slider for when we change the value in the slider. And then we've got the mouse listener, mouse motion listener and mouse wheel listener. There are other listeners as well. Um, if you want to respond to something changing on a component, then the best thing to do is look at its Java doc, see what listeners we can add to it, and then add that listener. And you'll find that the you can still access the component itself if it's in scope. If not, you could do get source to get the component back out of the event object that comes into the listener method call. And you can respond to various events and things that have happened and you'll find it's quite intuitive what you can do. For example, you can add a key listener to a text area or something that where people are going to be um, typing. Um, I don't know whether you can add a key listener to a button, but you probably can. But why would you want to? But you'll be able to add the listeners to do the things that you want to do. So that's how we use listeners to listen to events that users are creating. So thanks for watching.